Hello friends, hope you all are doing good. Happy to meet you all again today. How are you all? Oh, you are doing good. Let's listen to a missionary story today. Today, we are going to hear about Adoniram Jackson. Have you heard of Adoniram Jackson? A missionary to Burma. The four words that describes Adoniram Jackson's are faith. He kept his faith in Jesus. Number two, courage. He had the courage to move forward in the middle of troubles. Number three, convictions. He was a man of biblical convictions. Number four, sacrifices. He sacrificed his life to serve the Lord. Don't forget these four things, qualities of Adoniram Jackson. Okay? Faith, courage, conviction and sacrifices. The four qualities of Adoniram Jackson. Don't forget it. Come on. Now, let's find out how these four words are applied in his life. Are you ready? Okay. Come on. Let's get started now. I am going to check you to Adoniram's life. Adoniram Jackson was born in August 9th, 1788 in America. He was the first American missionary. He was so brilliant. His parents were amazed at his level of thinking and intelligence. His parents started to teach him about Bible when he was a little boy. At the age of three, he learned to read. At what age? At the age of three. Right? He learned to read. He was very brilliant. As I said earlier. So, at the age of four. At the age of four, he used to gather his friends and he used to preach to them about Jesus. At the age of four. Amazing, right? Yeah. And he loved his song. And he always loved to sing that song. Do you know his song is that? Okay, this was his favorite song. Go, preach the gospel, save the Lord. What was his song? Go, preach the gospel, save the Lord. And at the age of 10, he learned Greek and Latin. Wow, at the age of 10, what we were doing? What have we been doing? Any 10 years here? Yes. He was struggling to learn English and all right, but see, he learned Greek and Latin. And at his 16, he joined in Brown University. 16 age, you'll be still schooling, right? But he joined in university to take his degree. And he got a best friend there. Do you have a best friend? You all got a best friend? Yes, you have a best friend, right? So, his best friend name was Jacob Ames. He was not a believer. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe that God exists. Joining with him, Adoniram went so far away from the Lord. And he began to live a luxurious life. Very soon, he became like Ames. And started arguing with his parents, telling that, I don't believe in God. There is no God. So he started arguing with his parents. Finally, one day, he fought with his parents and he moved to New York in search of his dear friend, Jacob Ames, in order to find his friend and also to enjoy the rest of his life. He searched everywhere for Jacob. Traveling on a horse, he was searching for him that only couldn't see him that day. Finally, in New York, he found one hotel. He found one hotel to stay that night. But there were no rooms available. But Jackson requested them for one room to stay that night. Finally, the receptionist said, Sir, there is one room which is beside a sick person's room and it will be a disturbance for you to stay there. He may make some sounds, he may shout at the night. 
Jackson was okay with that room. He said, it's okay. I can take the room. You can allocate that room for me. So, the hotel manager allocated that room for him. In the midnight, that sick person was yelling and screaming with pain and he was shouting there. Arjun was not able to sleep that. Morning, he got up and he packed everything and on this way, he inquired about this sick person to the receptionist. And the receptionist replied that, Sir, his name was Jacob Ames. He passed away last night. Jetson got shocked. Hearing that name, his anonymous neighbor was Jacob Ames, his dearest friend. That time in Jetson's heart, two things were pondering, that is, the death and the hell. He realized that this is not the right thing. He was not right. And he cried and moaned and asked God pardon for his sins and the things that he took. And he decided to get back to him and he decided to join a seminary. In that seminary, during that time, he experienced the God's love and God's care in his life. He loved to study God's word. God started speaking to him. While in his final year, he joined the missionary team of his college, the seminary, and he submitted his life to be a missionary for God. Once Judson found a book in the library and he came to know about the place named Burma and he started praying for the people of Burma. He, he got a great burden for the Burmese people and he decided in his heart that I will tell about God and God's love. I will tell about the love of Jesus to the Burmese people. During this time, Jetson got married. He married to a girl named Anne. And both of them decided to travel together to Burma for doing God's ministry. At that time, a war was happening between England and Burma. And the Burmese king thought that Jetson is a spy sent from England in order to spy the things that is happening in Burma. So he arrested Adoniram Jetson and tortured him a lot. Jetson's wife was pregnant and he, she went to King's palace and pleaded to King that his husband is not a spy. She wanted to somehow rescue him. She tried her level best. She was a very strong woman. She tried many things in order to help him, even though they didn't listen to her and Jetson was imprisoned for 18 months and did her best to bring out him. Later he was released and by that time his dear wife and precious kids were dead. Jetson pitched a tent in forest and started meditating upon God's word. Leaving there he translated his Bible into Burmese language and made a dictionary for the Burmese people. By his six years of doing ministry, only one person was saved. Only one person was saved. And by 12 years, 18 converts. He got 18 converts. While he was traveling back to America, he felt so sick. Doctors found he had a serious lung disease. And on April 12, 1815, he died at the age of 61. 61 on board ship on Bay of Bengal and buried in the sea, having spent 37 years in the mission field and only one trip back to his home, America. His words while doing ministry were very inspiring. I will not leave Burma until the cross is planted here. That was it. I will not leave Burma until the cross is planted here. That, that is so inspiring, right? Take it. What does the missionaries teach us? You are hearing about this missionaries these days. What do they teach us? Have confidence in Christ, the one who called you for one who called you for us to leave his Christ and to die his king. For us to leave his Christ and to die his king. They gave their life to do ministry for God. How happy is to be part of God's mission, isn't it? Yes, it is really a joyful thing to be part of God's mission. We may not see the results through our eyes. 
you cannot you may not see that but after years long years the result will come out sure it will come out as the bible says unless the grains of wheat falls into the ground and die it abides alone but if it dies it bears much fruit right if it dies it bears much fruit let's pray let's all close our eyes and let's bow down our head and pray dear god thank you for this wonderful missionary stories that we have learned thank you for helping us to know that was not just a story but that was the life led by the people of god help us to be the part of your mission thank you for listening to our prayer in jesus name amen god bless you all take care